Um, we've also had some feedback about transport in Scotland, so you'll not be surprised to have some questions um, around that. Minister, are you confident that Transport Scotland ferry officials have sufficient training and experience in maritime matters to effectively specify and manage ferry service contracts of significant scale? Yes, I am. Um, obviously, Transport Scotland are, is made up of civil servants who are uh, generic civil servants, so they work in lots of different government departments. But um, I have to say I've got two very experienced officials with me today. I'm not just saying that because they're with me. So I don't have a concern about the experience within Transport Scotland. Um, what I would say is that uh, capacity within Transport Scotland at the current time um, it's quite challenging in relation to ferries and you know that's because uh, my officials spend a lot of their time responding to parliamentary inquiries, responding to reports, responding to the copious amounts of correspondence that we receive and that's fine but that takes time and uh, sometimes I think that that is a pressure um, which you know actually needs to be addressed and I've raised this actually with the, the permanent secretary in relation to providing uh, greater uh, capacity within the ferries team in particular to ensure that we have the staff on board to deliver the changes and the improvements that passengers expect us to. So in your assessment, there's a need for greater capacity. Is that just yes. in terms of answering questions and, and dealing with normal parliamentary scrutiny and I guess media scrutiny or is it, is it more than that? Oh, it, it's not just that. It's, uh, well, I'll, I'll allow Transport Scotland to answer okay. for themselves, but I think it's fair to say that in recent times, I'll be careful how I say this, convener. In recent times, because the topic of ferries has become a topical one um, within the chamber, within parliamentary committees, as is quite right, and of course is, is in Parliament's gift, the, the workload pressures on Transport Scotland have been greater than they have been probably at any other time than before now. Mm. And that actually does have an impact on the progress we've been able to make in a number of different areas. So I will allow Transport Scotland, of course, to speak but for themselves. Just before you do, so I just want mm. to be clear for everyone um, listening, you do welcome that scrutiny. Oh, absolutely. And the opportunity for, for any lessons to, to be uh, learned. Absolutely. Okay. And I actually think the, the committee's inquiry is really important. And mm -hmm. um, I'm keen that we use the committee's inquiry and the recommendations that you will provide us with mm -hmm. to help inform the draft ICP Shift 3 and where we get to on Project Neptune. So I, I very much welcome it. Okay. Chris? I would absolutely echo, echo those points as, around what, uh, as well as responding quite rightly to the scrutiny that, that, that's involved, but also what can we take from this, from the evidence we've seen from the people you've had in front of you already, uh, from the reports of the committee itself, from the direct engagement we're having here today. I, I, I mean, I think I, I would say, uh, for, for, as, as the Minister has said, uh, there are pressures within the team uh, around responding to a, a number of things, but we, are, we, we have benefited from some additional resources in, in, in recent times and a bit of a pivot from the organisation to support that, which has allowed us to really get into that forward-looking space, which I think is where the, where the committee is, uh, and actually the work uh, we've been able to kind of put people in, in to, do, to drive forward the ICP work, which is really what we uh, and, and communities are, are really keen to, to press on with to start to get some of that certainty and actually that engagement on the kind of reshaping of, of our draft into something that, that we've, we've had a chance to properly engage with. Um, so really looking forward to getting out there to, mm -hmm. to do that um, uh, and indeed continue the engagement we already they have with communities uh, and stakeholders across the piece. And I'm sure you'll be reassured that the Minister has confidence in Transport Scotland uh, and everyone in your team, but I'm sure you will recognise that um, the public perception can be different and, and we've heard some challenging conversations when we've been doing our inquiry visits. So going back to the, I suppose, the original question which was about the sufficiency of training and skills and expertise in terms of managing um, contracts and projects of significant scale. Um, what do you think needs to happen to improve that, that confidence, that public confidence in Transport Scotland? <laughs> So, so I've certainly heard uh, some of those reflections in your, your earlier sessions. Um, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure those are entirely universal uh, and certainly don't reflect their experience when we have those, those detailed engagements. As the Minister said, we, we are uh, journalists and civil servants. Uh, we, we set policy. We don't dictate it. We, we work with, uh, with communities, stakeholders and other parties on that. Um, but we do very much rely on the expertise that we have within the other parts of the tripartite. And, and we always say tripartite, but obviously there's also CERCO and in, in, uh, Circle North Link in the mix there too, and also people like the Ferries Community Board and other people that we engage with across the piece. So I, we don't purport to be uh, overall, the overall experts with all of the answers. Our role is 
very much to support ministers in that engagement, where around specifications of contracts and other elements, as with other uh, large government contracts, we will also rely on advice of uh, industry experts and consultants, uh, as, as people would expect us to do as part of that. 